गुड मॉर्निंग आत्मन गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग आत्मन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग thank you for joining what a pleasure to see so many people okay in the mornings winter morning 6 am wow it shows so much of interest <laughs> okay let's just close our eyes and align for a few minutes uh, a few seconds rather breathe in and breathe out and just center yourself again okay? so in a lot of uh, my class i often to ask you to breathe in through nose and breathe out through mouth and then uh, i ask you to connect to your angel guides masters healing angels healing masters and very few of you have ever asked what do you mean by all that and who are we really connecting and yet people do feel different and we feel different uh, not because there are palpable visible shift but there's some internal shift that happens when even if you intend to just connect i'm going to tell you the whole story behind um, the whole um, series that i'm introducing before that let's do that once again let's center ourselves correctly and then we'll take it up now again i'm telling you to do things without explaining however i will explain in this class uh, what are we really doing when we are kind of centering ourselves so first close your eyes and take a few breath begin with deeper and deeper breath and as you start breathing deeper and deeper you withdraw your energy from the external world and bring it back to yourself now i want you to take deep breath from your nose and breathe out from your mouth because when you breathe in and breathe out you're also letting go of a lot of emotional toxins breathe in through your nose breathe in a lot of positive energy and breathe out through your mouth breathe out stresses worries anxieties fears and frustration breathe in and breathe out you'll start feeling emptier and emptier and there would be a point where you start feeling lightheaded and little wobbly you can stop at that time and switch over to normal breathing with regular practice you need fewer and fewer breathing exercise or breaths to feel empty from within and that's when you get ready to grasp more more of wisdom more of awareness slowly switch over to normal breathing breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth
Now, let's invoke angel guides and masters. Healing angels and healing masters. your higher consciousness radical consciousness and the ultimate resource energy Seek the blessings, the guidance, answers and solutions. Seek the assistance, inspiration and constant alignment. Now, take a deep breath in once again and gather all your energies back into your body and open your eyes. So do you feel a difference when you do that? Would anybody like to share what happens? then I'll tell you why it happens. No. I see some new uh, names. Yao Yogi, hi. Yeah, tell us. Um, hello, ma'am. Hi. Uh... Uh, the moment we started invoking the angel guides and the masters and our higher consciousness, there is this feeling of soothing, calming energy that encompasses, encompassed me. And then it just felt that I'm part of the same energy or the same team. That's, that's the uh, feeling that I had during that. Uh, before I started the reading exercises, my mind was wavering a lot, thinking about a lot of things. Uh, the moment we started uh, channeling through the breath, uh, the noise around me started getting dissipated and then I was able to focus and then listen to these statements a little more clearly. Yes, that, that's really the intent. Thank you so much, Yogi. Oh, you almost kind of... Um, summed up everything so a lot of schools they teach meditation through breath work so let me first begin by saying what is meditation because meditation is different for different people and for some people it is just closing your eyes and sitting endlessly and for some people you could be mobile you could be dynamic and you could be still meditating so there's a lot of uh, different understanding for meditation. Dhyan, you know, that's a Sanskrit word. But dhyan of what? Are you meditating on a loved one? 
or are you meditating on money? Are you meditating on some subject? Are you meditating on some questions or some query that you have in your mind? Or are you just being? It's different for different people. Meditation also can change, the experiences can change as you shift in your awareness and consciousness. So a true meaning is union. You know, it, it's a part of the yoga system and yoga is not just asana. So true meaning is yoga and that is connecting to your consciousness, the union. And that's the experience that we have. It's not just with meditation because you could be meditating on anything, but it's yoga, the union with certain frequencies, with certain um, state of being. That's what makes you feel in total bliss in that very moment. Now, for some people, it becomes a daily routine. And my recommendation is make meditation a way of life rather than just one thing like a to-do, tick mark. Today, I've meditated enough. So you may begin with 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Then you can live life being in a meditative space where you're cooking, you're traveling. You are doing your radio, regular chores or, you know, going for shopping. Still, you can be in a meditative space and still enjoy the bliss of life and joy of life. Pull on being in a meditative space and how to do that. We're going to talk about that. So we started by simply withdrawing our attention. So rather than saying that don't think of this, don't think of that, don't think of that, it's meaningless. This is what most people say, oh, I should not be thinking about this. I should not be thinking about uh, the games and internet and whatever experiences uh, you normally have. But you say, I should not be thinking about you're actually thinking about the same. So for example, I want you not to think about um, red colors, uh, colored donkey, you know. If I said, don't think of, you can think of anything, but don't think of red colored donkey. Now what happens? Your attention is on red colored donkey, though there's nothing like a red colored donkey, but you'll still paint donkey, right? And try and visualize just because I told you not to do that. And this is what you're going to continue doing the moment you think, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. You, you're actually doing that. So when you're meditating, if your attention is not to think, you're going to keep thinking about that. So rather than not to think, think about what you want to think on or, or focus on. So focus on breath. Breath is life. It remains with you. Breathing remains with you right from the birth till the time you take your last breath. So that's truly yours. Focus on your breath and internalize. The moment you start focusing on your breath, really feel it. And you can begin by feeling in depth, starting from how you breathe, how your chest expands, how the chest collapses, how it feels in the throat, how it feels in the nose. When you start experiencing the breath full on, you're back into your body with your breath. So rather than saying, okay, stop thinking about what you have been thinking, it's better to start thinking about you. So you kind of bring your attention back to you. The whole day we are so busy thinking about things which are not you, which is external in a way, and yet internal because everything is our extension. And yet your energies are all over because you've been thinking of people in America, Australia, Europe, anywhere, and subjects which are so diverse, the newspaper headlines and politics and pornography and crime. And it just goes on and on and on. Your attention, even as I'm using these few words, you've already distracted and you know scattered your energies. Do you realize you feel different? You know, when I'm saying all these things, 
So again, okay, your energy have got distracted, bring back. And again, focus on the breath. Bring back it again, focus on the breath. Start observing your breath and see even if your energy got scattered, you can again be back. It's so easy to keep coming back. And why should you come back? Because at any given point in time, you are partly available to yourself, not full on. And, and that's unfair, right? You, you meant to be available to yourself 100%, but you're hardly there with you. You're everywhere with everyone and not with you 100%. So if you're not 100% within you, with you, you're not 100% effective. You can't give your best if you're not even there. So a lot of times we are just mechanically available to people, to the activities that we do, whatever we do. It's just a part of us. Mind is roaming all over. And with mind, because thoughts are energy, they're scattered all over. So the more you bring it back, the more effective and functional you are. At times, even your body suffers when the energies are scattered all over. The so body also doesn't get full energy. So it's best to keep bringing back your energies, not by stopping yourself from getting distracted, but by allowing yourself to be focused on you, encouraging yourself to be focused on you. And a very simple Technique would be just observing your breath. And the moment you observe your breath, you're fine. You start stabilizing. And even if your breath is unnatural, erratic, it starts coming down, become regular, smooth, easier, and more harmonious. You can also do some breathing exercises or just observe your breath. Initially, when we are into a a lot of uh, desire to do things, it would be a good idea to control your breath because you like controlling something or the other. You can control based on your tendencies, you know, so if you have a need to keep controlling everything, it would be a good idea to start with your breath. And later you find no need to control because your breath is much beautiful and harmonious if you allow your natural being just to be. And it would be so smooth, smooth so rhythmic, so uniform on its own. All your breath needs is your attention, full on on your being. And you naturally become calmer. So that's about the breath. And this is something you, you don't need training, you just keep doing on your own. So easily, so effortlessly, isn't it? Next would be to invoke. Now, what do what do I mean by invoking? So there's a whole big philosophy around. We only recognize beings who are in their body because we've been gifted with five senses, I would say six senses, but we only recognize the five senses. Why? Because that's what is acceptable by the world, because that can be justified and quantified. So we know the five senses and we've been operating out of five senses. Five senses. However, behind all the beings who are in body, there are also beings who are not in body. Now, they could be the departed ones, our ancestors, our you know, senior citizens whom you knew, or they could be the beings who've never been human, but they are there. Behind all these living human beings, there are a lot of supporting team of beings available to guide you, to monitor you, 
to take you to the right place at the right time, to meet the right people, to let the right thing happen to you. And a lot of you would have stories to tell how you met your soulmate under completely crazy circumstances and how you bumped into each other or how you met your business partner or stuff like that, certain turn of events, which is kind of so mysterious that you would have never gone or ventured in that spot or that place. And you landed up going there and found things differently. Um, and you know how your life changed from there, how you were kind of taken and what was that force? Who took you there? How did you happen to, why was there a car breakdown where you took a halt and met somebody or why you felt guided to go to some places from where the life changed? A lot of things could happen, especially the important turn of events, which we think we did it. A lot of time it is pre-designed, pre-organized and the beings who are guiding you are also guiding others whom we are supposed to be meeting at the right time. And we know how at times all the doors closes and only one is left open for you to walk out of. You think helpless, uh, helplessness or powerlessness has made you go through this, but these are all pre-planned designs. There are greater designs which encompasses the humanity. There are bigger plans in place to make sure that all of us are, you know, are on the right track, right state of evolution, functional enough. There is a kind of a governance in place at the metaphysical level. And there are several frequencies who've got together to make sure that things are governed in the right way. Now, for that to happen, there's a network of beings who are looking after us and looking after many more individuals, including plants and animals and uh, and the non-material, material beings, as well as certain um, inanimate objects or even certain uh, experiences, right? So all that is being looked after, regulated, and governed at the highest level of consciousness, and they are in a beautiful network system and they, they are networking themselves and in turn governing all of us. And we are at some level governed towards certain experiences, evolution, and also a certain way of living, thinking, interacting, looking after ourselves and looking after masses. If our existence involves just taking care of ourselves and only taking care of few beings around, probably some of those angels and other ancestral um, angels or guides are enough to guide us towards our highest and the best. If you are in a position where your being can influence a lot of other beings, directly or indirectly, then you will have evolved masters who are looking and taking care of you, looking after you and taking care of you so that you do well, so that you can do what you're meant to do. You can be facilitated. They, they really love you, they take care of you, however, not in the manner you always think they should. Because they have larger interest in mind. And what's best according to them may not be the best for us. 
once we start understanding ourselves through their point of view, your point of view can also shift to a great extent and you may expand your horizons and awareness and consciousness to look at life in a very, very different way. Right now, our aspirations are pretty limited because we've been exposed to something that is pretty limited and restricted. When you connect with them, you open up to the whole new existence and consciousness because they can have a better version and a vision compared to us because we have certain limitations. We are limited by our five senses and six senses not necessarily develop so much or align to the larger vision. So they can give you a different perspective, a different vision and a different guidance, which can lead you in a direction which feels a little strange to begin with, at times even a bit illogical. However, it does make sense over a period of time and sometimes in retrospect. We all have certain experiences and we've brushed it aside. Some of us have felt intrigued and some of us have felt scared and afraid and closed the chapter then and there because it's so safe to operate from what seems to be just limited and known and familiar. What is known and familiar is our inputs from five senses and our conscious and logical thinking and way of functioning based on the guidance given by our parents, education. It's all familiar, it's known, the whole world functions this way. However, a lot of successful people, they may listen to all the logical guidance and yet may have some offbeat thinking and a courageous first step in a direction which is unknown to the rest of the world. And they amazingly follow that so-called natural thinking and create something which is new. They may think that they have done it. And at the same time, they also know that there is some assistance which is assisting them in their thinking, in their manifestation, in their way of performing and taking actions and decisions. So we are all guided, doesn't matter by whom, at what level, for what reasons, because we all are influencing each other. We're not alone here, everyone, is interconnected and as we move and as we do what we do, we are creating an impact. And that impact can have a major influence over the world and we have no idea how much it is important. So to have the right impact in the right way on the universe, it's important that we all move in sort of synchronicity, in a rhythm, and that is guided by the masters, ascended masters. And this master says they have lived a life of a human. They also know the human limitation, human aspiration, human emotions, and even shortcomings as well as potentials. And they have taken upon them to make sure that the intended evolution takes place for individuals as well as for the masses and for the humanity. They've left their body. And yet they are very much present with the power of their intent and power of their eternal potential to be and bring about a positive shift. And 
consciously remaining connected with them can ease your life and bring about a major shift in your level of consciousness. We can make their lives easy and our lives easy as well because they also have to struggle a lot to convey the message. And we also struggle a lot when we do not follow that message. So this particular series is an attempt to consciously connect to something that is so far unconscious for some of you and learn, first of all, to connect, then infer the guidance, have courage to apply some of the guidance and make it easier and easier to work in synchronicity. Synchronicity with each other, with metaphysical beings, and with synchronicity amongst our conscious mind, subconscious mind, and superconscious mind, physical world, and metaphysical world. And enjoy the integration as well as interconnection to be super functional and super effective, not only for our individual lives, but for the collective consciousness. So that's the introduction. I'm sorry if it's too um, kind of um, abstract, uh, yet I would try to make it easily understandable as much as possible with passing days. Okay, having said that, over to you. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer that. Okay, good morning, uh, Atman. Good morning. So, uh, the question is, at times when we try and uh, align, there are some pains and aches uh, being observed. Hmm. So, what is that? Yes, yeah, so those aches and pains are... Uh... Your body is intelligence uh, communicating with you through aches and pains. Okay. And um, being part of the radical fraternity, you should be able to observe some of them and infer and interpret. Generalized severe aches and pains could be resistance. Mm. But little, like, you know, uh, hmm. let's say, um, for a for a friction of time, it would come and it would go. I mean, hardly when you pay attention, that would be registered. Otherwise, you know, it will not be registered. But still, if you want, you can, uh, I mean, the focus uh, will go there for a while. And then, you know, again, you'll come yeah, back so to that. That swift pain or a quick pain hmm. is something that is getting rewired in that part of the body. Okay. Okay. Which mm. makes it a little painful because you're not uh, fully uh, available to the shift. And that's why it, it's perceived as a, you don't need to. If it's a fleeting pain, let it just pass. Okay. Yeah, that happens. You Thank may get you. sensations also. A lot of us, you know, vibration uh, after. Uh, you mm. get some movement, some crawling under the skin and all. That's all rewiring process that happens uh, very naturally. As you know, it's like when you have your computer connecting to the um, this uh, connecting to the Wi-Fi and going through upgrades. There are natural, you know, like uh, processes happening, which we don't need to know. It will just complete by itself and we'll restart. Okay, there's another thing which I would like to ask is, you know, sometimes uh, uh, they say that, you know, uh, cross leg karke baithte hai na. So, uh -huh. in the lean position, when you keep uh, keep your legs crossed, they say uh -huh. the energy does not flow. But uh, is, it, is it like that? Or uh, you need to just keep the legs uh, separated? I mean, 
or just relax in a relaxed position. You can squat, you can walk, you can um, jump, you can do whatever. And um, thank you. And uh, uh, before going to bed, when we are doing this, you know, trying to align, and then sometimes, you know, you don't know what is what is happening, but you are in a faster sleep. So it's is it a good process? Is it a good habit that you do it before going to bed? So Daddy, right now you're asking me, and later probably after end of 10 sessions, you'll start asking the masters. Because okay. what's good for you could be not so good for others. Uh, we can have individual answers. Okay. okay. But it's okay. It's perfectly okay. Everything okay. is okay. And if there's something not okay, you'll be guided. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you could have a personalized guidance and get in touch for your personalized guidance. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, so here there is a direct message. My friend passed away. One thought of her triggers headache. Can you explain that, please? Okay. So when people pass away, they're just leaving their body, but they are around. Their energies are around. The soul part may go away, may merge eventually with the cloud consciousness, but their emotions, their thoughts, the thought emotion complex is still floating around. You can connect to them like any other human being. It's just that you don't have to connect to them with their body. Now, not necessarily those energies are very conducive. You hold on and remain connected due to your own incompletions of emotions. And these energies eventually do interfere because they also have their own incompletions. And you naturally attract some of them because their energies and their incompletions complement our incompletion. And it can become a messy affair, may not be very helpful. It's best to complete that incompletion we have related to them. So for example, you have a feeling that, oh, I did not look after uh, my friend correctly when she called me or I insulted her in the past, or I did not give company when she needed, I did not pick up phone. So if you have some guilt, you have some regret, or you could relate to her suffering with your suffering. And, you know, um, you have some an incomplete business with them. You know, I'm using the word business, but incomplete conversation, incomplete uh, exchange of uh, communication, you complete within yourself because it's too late for you to complete as an individual one on one. But you see, why would you come? Why would you keep attracting somebody else's energy, even though it, that person is your best friend or mother or father or sister? Doesn't matter. They've left their body. They are there. The more refined frequency you have, the more easier it is for us to be at peace with them. Uh, we have a lot of such frequencies. Now, based on our level of evolution, we connect to some of them. Some of them could be your friends. Some of them could be your ancestors. Some of them could be unknown. And some of them could be masters. The more we evolve, the more we connect to the refined frequencies, the more we connect to the refined frequencies, the more we evolve. Does that mean you should not uh, connect to the so-called lower frequencies? Look at them and understand them. See them as your mirrors. Evolve, move on, move forward, and raise your consciousness. That's my guidance. Ma'am, 6 a.m. IST is 7.30 p.m. EST. Is it okay to watch recording at 6 a.m.? Is it mandatory to be live? 
No, not necessary. You can watch recordings later also. However, I may not be able to answer you immediately. The answer can come in the WhatsApp group later. Or maybe there is one-on-one -on -one session. You can use that, one of the sessions, to get your answers. That's it. Great. What else? All right. So... Can I have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, so the departed souls, some of them don't take 100% with them. They leave parts behind. And, and that's, you know, we don't know which one, you know, what we're connecting to. Is, is that what I, I mean, I understood from this? Yeah, we are yeah, connecting to their incompletions generally. Or sometimes they complete the cycle and join us as the angel guides. How would we know whether we are connecting to the lower or the higher? And... Um, so in the metaphysical world, there's nothing like lower and higher. Everything is, right? So anything that disturbs you, makes you feel uneasy, is uh, still incomplete and unhealed. Oh, thank you. If you feel totally in bliss being in that contact and communion. Uh, they're probably, they're back uh, in a different role play to be with you. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other question? Uh, good morning, Atman. Good morning. Uh, Ma'am, I just wanted to understand when you are saying that the departed soul has completed the journey and they have left, like I'm just talking about my mother whom I just lost recently in March. So I always get distracted with her thoughts, her feelings, her ideas and everything and it just, I'm not able to be me. Uh, so in that case, it's important to complete your part of stories. You know, we don't know whether they are hanging, hanging around or we are holding them back. Yeah, I'm trying a lot, but I'm just not able to overcome so as to say like. Yeah, yeah, we can organize some sort of support for that, you know, to complete. Gee, thank you. It requires an intense... Uh, work out one once for all kind of thank you yeah, yeah. at times it's just incomplete communication conversation a little incompletion could be there you know so having a heart to heart conversation at soul level can bring bring in a lot of peace yes so we're going to have for the nine such sessions, we'll be connecting to various um, ascended masters. Now, which masters? Don't ask me because they will let me know whom to introduce and when to introduce. I'm just going to flow because it's their instructions. If this program is there, they have handpicked. Initially, I thought of screening through uh, some people and saying, okay, fine, you join, you don't join. Um, later, I said, just leave it to them because they are the ones who will handpick. They will choose. They will do the needful. I'm just leaving it to them. Your welfare, their welfare, everyone's welfare. And I know we all are taken care of in the greatest plan. Have the right intent for joining, if at all you're joining. Uh, and your intent will bring about the necessary shift. That's it. So uh, we're going to have upcoming nine Thursdays, at the sessions early in the morning. At eight. Eight, eight o'clock? No, eight sessions. Eight sessions. Ah, oh, sorry. Upcoming eight sessions after this, right? Yes. Oh, total eight. So seven more sessions, right? No, no, so, Aaron, you're right. This is three masterclass and eight more sessions. After that, eight more sessions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so eight more sessions and um, yeah, and one-on-one -on -one, one session because you might have your exclusive need to connect to 
a particular frequency at that time. And to honor that, we may have one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yeah, so Yogi is saying nine, including one-on-one -on -one with Atman, and today is including 10, so it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Yogi. Yes, so we're going to have that. And uh, uh, a lot depends upon your intent, your openness to grasp and your allowance to uh, make the best out of it. That's all I can say. Yeah, over to you, Uma, if there's anything. No, Atman, is this, we're going to do it the same time every Thursday, uh, 6 to 7 uh, India time, and that's it. And I'll share the details then if people want to register on the WhatsApp group itself. And there is a one-on-one -on -one session with Atman that you've already shared. Yeah, that's which you can schedule as per your convenience later. Yeah. Okay, I think I don't feel like dragging this, but let's close our eyes and meditate for a few minutes before we uh, end the session. Just close our eyes and take a few deep breaths. So even if we do not know we are guided and assisted, let's kind of acknowledge that. Certainly there are certain frequencies whose organizing, balancing, harmonizing our lives, monitoring at some level. It may be simply a body and organs. It could be the fine balance of elements in the universe. It could be temperature control. It could be gravity. A lot of things are in place and in synchronicity. Let's acknowledge and have gratitude. for the interplay of the network of different frequencies. Even though we are in our bodies, some of us are right there simultaneously. And looking after the welfare of larger good. Let's transcend beyond this limitedness. Expand our consciousness. Look for the possibility of aligning to the limitlessness, even in the seemingly limited lifespan. Let's be who we are meant to be. Let's do what we are meant to do. Let's live the way we are meant we are meant to live. Let's experience what we are here to experience. Let's connect to our internal GPS. And let's be our best every minute, every day, every year throughout our life. We deserve it. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you.